Hey, What's that on it? <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Sorry about that. I don't trust you now. <laughs> I was gonna do it. Gonna do it. <laughs> See? Women's intuition. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Shavin Life. So just to catch you up, we uh, spent the last couple days prepping the orchard, getting everything cleared out. Yesterday we had a long good day. We got 10 of the 15 trees in the ground uh, ready to go. And today we're going to try and finish off the last five. Uh, we might get some bad weather overnight and I don't know if it's going to be nice tomorrow. So if we can bang these last five trees out it'll be a big done stamp on the orchard if we can put the five trees in today I'll, we'll be happy if we don't get to go around and wrap them you know do the cages and the stakes and everything i don't think we're going to be too worried about it we had some wind yesterday after we did the 10 trees and there was nothing moving um the critters have enough to eat around here that i think we can buy ourselves a day or two before we start putting the, the fencing and stuff around it so if we don't get that in today, maybe we'll start off tomorrow trying to do all the protection for the trees. I also think uh, Dave wants to give you a little tour since we haven't actually shown you how they're laid out, spaced, what they are, and you know the, the rhyme to our reason. Yeah, and the there's reason a to our rhyme. yeah, and there's a few like t like tips I guess, and I'm, there's a million bare root, uh, you know, planting bare you know bare root fruit trees or planting fruit trees. A million videos out there, and we'll just tell you the couple things that we stuck by when we did these and I'm sure you can see some of it in the video but I guess we won't talk anymore we'll just get, get to, to planting <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. It late, was it was raining start. all this morning. Yeah, yeah it was late raining start. this morning. Okay, so this is day whatever. And we didn't get really a chance to wrap things up yesterday when we planted that last tree, but we did get all five trees finished up yesterday. All 15 of the fruit trees are now in the ground. 
and we got a massive rain yesterday so it couldn't have worked out any better that everything got watered down really well um, but like I said we really didn't get a chance to kind of wrap yesterday's day up like we would normally um, we kind of knew the rain was coming so instead we spent like the last hour before we were gonna run out of steam going back to each <laughs> going back to each fruit tree and we had kind of separated the small rocks from the big rocks uh, the small rocks we collected in five gallon buckets and we wound up taking them over to where our culvert dumps out under our driveway and sort of just creating like a dry riverbed while there was no water obviously that changed last night after the rain but we're basically just filling that little area in with all the small stone and then the larger rock anything you know five six seven inches or bigger we basically just piled behind the shabin right now and we'll figure we'll use that for something else but we just basically wanted to get everything off the grass uh, mostly so that we could finish you know we could finish up today by going back and you know putting all the fencing and stakes and all that stuff around the trees but mostly so that i could We're brush doing that today. yeah so brush <laughs> Dina just found out we were working, um, but also so that I could go and brush cut when the grass starts to grow and not have to worry about running over a bunch of rocks. Um, but I think we're going to start this afternoon with uh, basically just getting the uh, first cage cut for around the tree. We're going to measure it out, make sure it's the right circle size, and then once we get the one that we like, we'll just go back and cut 15 more of those, get them all tied together, and we should be easy enough to come over and slide them over the tree. So we'll take you over to the shabin where we're gonna sit down and do all that work. The sun's kind of coming in and out, which is why I think we're gonna jump at it right now. So uh, without further ado, let's cut some fence, man. You guys wanna hear a good turkey call? It answered. <laughs> All right, so we cut the first one at six feet long. It made a really nice two foot circle. We're gonna keep that same measurement. So now that we feel good about it, we're gonna go cut the other ones that we need. And you can watch us do it in about 35 seconds. Like I said, we're leaving one side flat and then we're cutting so that we've got the little nub on the other side that we can basically bend to make the circle.
All right, guys, we're back at it again this morning. We kind of regrouped a little bit yesterday after we put those cages together. Um, everything went together really well and we were very happy. Um, but when we were done and we started to film actually putting the cages around the trees, we realized there were some things we didn't like. There were some materials that we wish we had. So we kind of stopped yesterday, which was good because it started to rain anyway. Um, and we read a little bit more last night just to kind of verify what we were doing was right um, or the best way. Um, and what we decided was instead of putting the landscape fabric down to protect the weed, to keep the weeds from coming up, we decided to scratch that idea. I really don't want to hinder any of the water getting down there, especially like this first year while these trees get established. Um, in addition to that, we didn't have as many stakes as we thought um, of the stakes we were going to use. And when we kind of reached out to see what it would cost just to go out and grab like 30 stakes, it was absurd. It was like a hundred dollars. So this morning we just took some old two by four, sixes, two by tens, and we ripped them down into some five foot pieces, inch and a half by an inch and a half. And then I just kind of put a little spike on the bottom so we could drive them into the ground. Um, in addition, we needed some mulch and I really wasn't sure which mulch and where we are, mulch isn't actually cheap. Even though we're in like the land of trees, um, it would have cost a nut, like another hundred dollars just for the, the mulch to mulch these trees. So all of a sudden, you know, having fruit trees just starts to get crazy expensive. So this morning, after I got done ripping down the stakes, Dana and I had been clearing that garden, our future garden a while back, and we were piling up really long straight saplings that we knew we'd eventually chip down and use for something. Well, we kind of figured we'd use it right now. So we pulled the truck back there and we loaded all the saplings up. We brought them around to the front of the house. We uncovered and brought out our chipper and got that started up this morning. And we just spent, you know, about a half an hour chipping up the uh, saplings. And we're going to use that as like, let's say the hardwood mulch for around the trees. So Dana's actually filling up the wheelbarrow and bringing it down now so that we can get started. We did just wrap one tree to make sure we felt good about how everything was going to go together. I know it's not like rocket science, but we sort of wanted to make sure everything was good before we got started. So the idea now is that we have the two foot cages. We have a five foot stake that we're basically going to put right inside the edge of that cage and we're going to drive it down. We're not actually going to stake the trees right now. They don't need it. They're not even moving when the wind blows. Um, but two things. One, the stakes will be here when we do need to actually tie these trees back. There might be a couple that we tie just to sort of straighten out a little bit because they have a wicked curve. Um, but in addition, we noticed that it was really nice to have this leaning inside the uh, cage so that we could tie wrap the cage to it in addition to the staples to hold it nice and tight. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to mulch the bottom. We're going to drive in the stake. We're going to slip the cage around. We're going to spike it down and then we're going to tie wrap it and we should be in good shape for right now. Um, like I said, no more landscape fabric and uh, we'll just hope for the best to keep the weeds from coming up around the trees. So we're going to do this one tree so you can watch up close. Then we'll put the camera back and we'll time lapse the rest of it. All right, let's slip it around, make sure it's nice and level. That's not bad. So we're just trying to get the cage as level as possible, mostly so that when I look out the window, my eye doesn't twitch, but uh, ultimately it'll make it nice when we put the staples in the ground to hold it. It's not like all oblong and wanting to pull the staples out of the dirt, but I think we're fairly close and we can just kind of adjust the rest of it with the wood chips. I figure we can move them. Yeah. 
So we're gonna pile up the wood chips and then we'll make our well in the center, pull it about five inches away from that trunk. That way we don't have to worry about, you know, anything getting redonkulous down there. It's also worth mentioning, just in case I didn't say it earlier in the video when we were cutting the, uh, the welded wire, this cage, is that because we're not going to wrap the actual trunk, I, they're way too small. The tree, the tree bark, the, the trunk protectors I have would just slouch right down. Um, so what we're going to do and what we planned on doing anyway is that we're going to wrap the bottom 18 inches to two feet in a quarter inch hardware cloth, which is probably going to be a pain in the butt, but we know that in the long run, it'll keep the small critters out there from chewing on the bark. The only problem is I had to order it because a two foot, the roll is like $150, which is absurd. So we bought a roll that's much wider and we're gonna have to just make a million cuts to rip it down to 18 inches, but it'll only cost us about $60 when it's all said and done. So um, the other thing too, is that we didn't have any landscape staples. So instead, to hold the cage down. We just took some insulation supports that you would squeeze up in your floor joists or your roof rafters to hold the insulation. And we just bent them. And now you have yourself a landscape stake. So we're gonna put four stakes in each cage. Then we're gonna tie wrap it to the stake. All right, so cage is nice and strong. Tie wrap to the stake, stakes in the ground, four staples around pushed into the dirt. The mulch is pulled away about five, six inches from around the trunk of the tree. It at least this allows us to water it really good, keep that water on the inside. And I think we should be in good shape. Once the tree gets a little bit bigger, then we'll actually tie it back to the stake so that it doesn't go nuts when the wind blows. Uh, once the hardware cloth comes in, we'll cut those pieces, get them wrapped around, and we'll probably just use some small tie wrap in two spots to kind of just uh, attach that to the bottom of the cage. Otherwise, we're going to rock and roll on the next bunch of trees now, and hopefully we have enough mulch to finish today. So we'll put you back up on the picnic table, and Dana and I will go to work.
out all about you. Come on, come with me. All right, folks, that's it. All 15 trees are planted. The stakes are in, the cages are on, and it officially looks like an orchard, but we won't call it one until we get a piece of fruit. <laughs> we are very, very, very excited. This has been a really long time that we've dreamt to have space big enough to do something like this. And although it's not a massive 250 uh, tree apple orchard. It is our 16 fruit tree mini orchard and we are super stoked. Um, you know, hopefully in the long run this is something that gives us you know some self-sufficiency and sustainability here on the homestead but we're gonna kind of put a done stamp on the orchard for like this second because like I said earlier that hardware cloth had to be ordered and shipped so it'll probably take a few days for me to get it a day or two to cut all the pieces up and get it back on. So what we'll do is um, we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna wrap this up as, let's say, the end of the fruit orchard uh, part two, let's say. And uh, I think what we'll do, just so that you can kind of get up close and personal with each tree, is that we'll just do a really short video next and we'll just call it a mini fruit orchard tour or something. And we'll walk you guys around and show you each tree. And that way you can see the stakes and the tie wraps and the staples and all that stuff up close if you can't see it that well in the video but appreciate as always you guys following along with the shabbin life um, again man i can't stress enough this is super fly for us uh, we hope that if you guys are out there you know doing your you know either a small plot or a big plot if you've been dreaming of you know doing something like this it's possible um it's twice as much these days but it's possible <laughs> but uh it's all relative yeah i suppose but if you've been following along since the very beginning, we're gonna try and do a picture of a before and after of right where, where we're standing because I don't think most of you will really believe what this place looked like when we first pulled in the drive. The very first time we ever pulled onto the lot, we have some video. Yeah. It, the sad thing is, is that it just doesn't look like anything. But we, we were so new to the game. I mean, we were filming like this with the phone, which looks ridiculous, you know, rather than, you know, in a landscape. You know, so it's a little hard to get, you know, the big picture. The good thing is that the birch tree that we love is in each one of these shots. So we always use it as sort of a reference point because in the beginning, you can't even tell what you're looking at. Uh, so we'll try and do maybe some before and afters, but uh, thank you to all the people that have been watching since the very beginning. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Um, we love your comments. Yeah. We love your questions. And uh, I know that we don't get super detailed in a lot of these videos because there's a lot of stuff out there that's very Nietzsche, you know, what kind of mulch to put around a tree, what kind of stakes to use for a tree, what, you know, there are specific videos for each, whereas this is sort of a vlog meets a how we do, like I always say. But um, again, man, appreciate you guys coming back to check out the videos. Thank you to all the people that are, the, the, the people that do comment, I'm starting to get to know you guys by name at this point and, I, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, so thank you guys for leaving comments and stuff like that. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Um, you know, other than that. It's a wrap for today. I suppose it's a wrap for today. Dana and I want some pizza, so we're gonna figure that out. Um, and uh, I think tomorrow is gonna be in the 90s. So we're gonna get a really heavy rain tonight, which is good. Um, you know, I think we're gonna take a break tomorrow 
because it's going to be so hot. We're so we're going to go find some shade because yeah. uh, the the shabin does not do well when it's that hot. You can't stay outside. You can't stay inside. So. We're going to find a plastic pool somewhere and we're going to fill it up with the IBC tote water. If we do that, we will show you. Yes, we will. Um, otherwise, we are going to find a pond somewhere and just go jump in it. If we do that, we'll show you. If we get shot at for doing that, we will show you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed at least the last two videos for the fruit orchard. Uh, we did our best to try and make them not crappy for you. So uh, like I said, we'll try and wrap this one up and then we'll come back with just a short mini tour so that we can walk you around. And uh, that way it might spur any questions that you guys have then. But until then, stay super fly, enjoy the rest of the day and we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Peace.